Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. But if you're new and maybe you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We have tons of fun here on this channel talking about makeup and all things beauty. And today we are taking it back to the basics. I asked you guys in a recent video if you would be interested in more tutorial based videos, more educational, informative videos that share tips and tricks and techniques that can help you to level up your skills when it comes to eyeshadow and applying makeup in general. And you guys were interested, so I am diving right into that with a blending eyeshadow tips and tricks video. I am going to do a deep dive into eyeshadow application and blending in this video. I am going to cover blending techniques and tricks, different brushes that you could use, how to choose the different brushes, and I am going to demonstrate how I apply and blend my eyeshadows. So I am getting quite involved. It's gonna be an in-depth video. I will leave timestamps down below so you can navigate this video however works for you the best and you can always use this video as a reference guide. So it's going to be an information packed video. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to learn my tips and tricks for the best eyeshadow application and blending, let's go ahead and jump into it right now. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump right into it by talking about the very first step that I think is crucial to your eyeshadow application and blending, and that is applying an eyeshadow primer. And I know there are people out there that say this step is not mandatory, it's not critical, you can skip this step altogether, it's so unnecessary, and I want to correct those people, okay? And and let you know that this step is almost 100% mandatory, regardless of your eyeshadow shape, your skin type, if your eyelids are oily or normal or dry, do not skip this step, especially if you're a beginner, especially if you're a beginner, because this will make your eyeshadow application and your blending so much easier. Oh my goodness, I used to apply eyeshadow without a primer when I just started out and I could not understand why my blending and application was so difficult, why didn't my eyeshadow pick up the way I wanted it to and why did it fade and crease within a couple of hours of wear and then I discovered eyeshadow primer and it completely changed the game for me and I have not been without eyeshadow primer since then. And I know there are people who can get away with applying eyeshadow directly to their lids and they have a decent time with it, which is fine, you know. If that's your preference, then go for it. But I'm just saying to you right now, if you apply an eyeshadow primer, your eyeshadow game is just gonna be stepped up that much more and you're gonna be able to like breeze through eyeshadow application and blend in and your life will be so much easier. I'm just saying, all right? And I have two eyeshadow primers that I have been going in between and I love both of them. My very first one is the Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. Now Urban Decay does have a couple of options available. There's the original primer potion that comes in a light purple packaging. I like that one but I prefer the anti-aging version. This just feels a little bit more comfortable on the eyelids. It holds the oils at bay. So if you have oily eyelids, you can rest assured that this will seal those oils in so they won't interfere with your eyeshadow throughout wear. And it may be a little bit pricey, but it's worth the investment. And this little tube will last you years. And I'm not saying like use this for years, but use this for years. I'm just, um, okay. Use at your own discretion, but this will last you 
a long, long time. So you will get your money's worth for sure. There's also a cheaper alternative that works almost as well. And I kind of use these interchangeably, but I find that this may be a little bit more drying than the anti-aging version from Urban Decay. This just has a bit of almost skincare properties to it. Even though I'm not sure they have skincare ingredients in here, but I feel like it might just be better for your eyelid skin. I'm just saying, but the Sephora Collection Boost and Lock Eyeshadow Primer is running a close second. This is a great eyeshadow primer and I use it for my eyebrows as well because you know what? You can use eyeshadow primer on your lids, on your brows, even on your face. Yes, so if you have really troublesome spots like your T-zone around your nose, you can use an eyeshadow primer. So you can double up and get like your money's worth for sure. And this one is at a better price point. It is from the Sephora collection. I believe it's between 10 and $12 because I think there was a price increase, but it is excellent. So you can't go wrong with an eyeshadow primer. I'm just saying prime those eyelids. Now this next step is optional. This is applying an eyeshadow base. Now an eyeshadow base is different from an eyeshadow primer. An eyeshadow primer has a specific formulation that is meant to dry down completely and create somewhat of a film over your eyelids that will help to seal in the oils that can spring up throughout the day and that will help prevent creasing of your eyeshadow and help with longevity throughout wear. Some of these formulations will also help your eyeshadow to stick a little bit more so they're a little bit more intense they're a little bit more punchy and they also help with blending but an eyeshadow base is different because it may not have that full dry down it may not have that sealing quality but it will help your eyeshadows to really pop and it will pick up the intensity of the eyeshadows as well as give eyeshadows something to stick to so if you have really powdery eyeshadows that go flying everywhere if you have glittery eyeshadows or sparkly eyeshadows they may not have a good binder in the formula they may not have their own built-in primer that will help them to adhere to your eyelid skin then they need Need something else to stick to so an eyeshadow base is a good option to include a lot of people use a concealer for this I do like using a concealer but a specific type of concealer so I don't use a liquid concealer on my eyelids I know there are people that do that and if you're going to use a liquid concealer I recommend you use one that dries down completely so dries down to almost a full matte because that way you will avoid the creasing that comes from applying an emollient product on your eyelids for me I tend to go in with my NARS concealer this is the soft matte complete concealer this is great because it does dry down it's a matte concealer it dries down it can crease but when I blend it out and apply eyeshadow over it, that kind of prevents it from creasing. So it's almost like I'm setting the concealer down. You can also use a paint pot. That is my second recommendation, if not my first, because this paint pot will prevent creasing. So this is a really great formulation from MAC. It's their Pro Longwear Paint Pots. It's a cream eyeshadow that you can use as an eyeshadow base. And I use the shade Lane Low, which is a skin tone shade for me. This is a permanent shade. They have various skin tone colors as well as colorful shades. So if you just wanted a one and done colorful look, you can go for a paint pot. But if you wanted a base, this is excellent. So with that being said, this would probably be my first recommendation followed by a drier concealer such as the NARS Complete Soft Matte. What? Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I don't always have to use that step. A primer by itself will work for all those techniques to help, you know, product to adhere, to blend, all that good stuff. So those are the two first steps. One, I recommend highly, I think it's almost mandatory. The second one is optional. Now, let's go into how do you actually apply these products and what tools do you use? So, step three, choose your tools wisely. And of course, I'm going to show you my favorite blending brushes and even my favorite lay down brushes instead of doing a separate video for them. So let's talk brushes. I'm going to try to make this as succinct as possible, but there is so much that goes into selecting a makeup brush that I can't be fully comprehensive. All right. So 
Let's talk about how to choose an eyeshadow brush. First things first, look at your face, look at your eye shape, look at the size of your eye compared to traditional eyeshadow brushes on the market. Do you have a lot of real estate on your eyelids? So is there a lot of space for you to apply eyeshadow and blend? or are your eyelids a little bit smaller? And I'm not even getting into mono lids and the shape of your eyes, hooded eyes, blah, blah, blah. I'm just talking about the real estate. How much space do you have on your eyelids? Because that will help to determine the size of brush that you pick up because size does matter. No matter what anybody else says, size does matter. For me, I have a lot of real estate. I have a lot of space between my crease line and my brows. Do you guys know the different parts of your eyes or should I just give you a quick rundown? Let me do a quick rundown because I feel like that might be helpful as well. All right, so what are we talking about? We have our eyelids. So your eyelid is the mobile part of your eye. So when you blink, that's the part that opens and closes, right? So that's the mobile part of your eye that's your eyelid, right? And then next is your crease. And it may not be obvious to you where your crease line is. It's easy to figure out though. It's where you can feel your brow bone sink into your eye socket. I know that sounds terrible, but it's that little area and sometimes you can tell exactly what it is just based on how your eyelids crease. And you can see it on mine, I have a defined crease right here. On this eye, it's a little harder to see, even though you see a line, that's not really where my crease is. My crease is a little higher because my brow bone actually starts right here. So just feel around your eyes to understand the anatomy of the eye and what different points we're talking about when we say, oh, apply the shadow on your brow bone area. Just be aware of where your brow bone is and where your crease is as well as your eyelid. Now you also have different sections of those areas that are referred to as well. So kind of divide your eye into three Thirds, okay, so you have the outer area the inner area by your tear duct the outer area is by the edge of your eyebrow and then the center three equal parts so you'll have the inner lid the center of the lid the outer lid the inner crease so now go on your crease inner crease center of the crease outer crease you also have the brow bone area so the point above your brow and this may vary in width and real estate space depending on, again, the size and the shape of your eye. For me, I have a lot of brow bone space, but I also have a lot of lid space. Some people have less lid space, more brow bone, more lid space, less brow bone, but your brow bone is now gonna be the area under your brow where that bone is, right? That orbital bone, feel for it, that is your brow bone area and that's the place where you will do the majority of your blending to create a nice gradient a nice faded effect you also have some very specific points that you'll hear spoken about as well such as your inner tear duct it's exactly what it sounds like the innermost part of your eyelid space that's what's called the inner tear duct you also have this very specific area on your outer crease and outer lid that we'll refer to as your outer V or outer C because of the shape you'll make when applying eyeshadow there. So the outer C is just a C shape between your crease line and your outer lid and your outer V is just creating a V shape between that same area, okay? The other point you have to remember is your lower lash line. It's exactly that, your lower lash line. Again, you have inner lower lash line, middle lower lash line, and outer lower lash line. Pretty straightforward, right? And then the last area you'll hear referred to a lot is the arch of your brow. So it's right beneath your brow, right here in this area. Some people refer to this area as the highlight area. It's really the arch of your brow and we tend to apply a highlight shade there. So just get comfortable with your face, get comfortable with your eyelids, figure out the size in comparison to other people's eyelids that you've seen, like how big is that? And if you're using me for reference, remember I have a lot of lid space, I have a lot of brow bone space, I have a lot of real estate, so the brushes I gravitate towards will be larger. If you have less real estate, smaller eyes, if you're going for specific specific looks. If you're going for a lot of detail, then your brushes will be smaller. So that's what I mean by size matters. And I'm using this brush to 
explain what I mean. This is one of the largest brushes that I use for blending. This is a Detail Pro from Sonia G. And a lot of people don't like using this brush the way I do, which is to blend color in the crease. They're like, that's too large for them. And that's okay. Just get a smaller brush in a similar shape. And we'll talk about shape in a little bit. But again, just be mindful that they're going to be different sizes of brushes. And you'll pick your brush based on what your needs are based on the size of your eyes and what you're going for in your eyeshadow look. So if you're going for more detail, remember, smaller brushes. But if you're going for a really blended, diffused look, then you're going to go for a larger brush or if you have larger real estate like I do. Now let's talk about the actual bristle type for your brushes because this comes into play when you're choosing your brushes. Do you want a synthetic hairbrush or a natural hairbrush? Those are your two options, synthetic or natural. And that choice depends on Quite a few things actually. First of all, what are your feelings towards using animal hair for brushes? I personally don't have an issue with it, but a lot of people just use synthetic brushes. They don't want to use animal hair brushes because the thought is that animal hair brushes cannot be cruelty free. That's up to you. That's a personal choice. So choose accordingly. If you go for synthetic brushes only, then stick to it, right? But if you're okay with animal hair brushes, I actually recommend using a combination of both. So I have synthetic brushes in my collection as well as animal hair, and I have brushes that have a blend of both, especially from Sonia G. Sonia G does a blend of synthetic and animal hair to get the best of both worlds, and I think those are like the ideal brushes to use. Animal hair brushes are going to be better for blending eyeshadow. And that's just a known fact from practice. Synthetic bristles have come a long way. The technology has improved so much throughout the years that you can get really great synthetic brushes that almost mimic animal hair, but they're not gonna be spot on. So if you don't have an issue using animal hair brushes, I'm just saying have a few in your arsenal. Other than that, it comes down to price point. Animal hair brushes are going to be on the more expensive side. Now again, with the technology improving, synthetic bristles can also get pretty pricey. Some of them have gotten close to animal hair prices, but in general, synthetic brushes are just gonna be a cheaper alternative to animal hair brushes. And then on the animal hair side, you still have a range of price points from different brands. Refer is a great brand to choose if you want animal hair brushes at a more affordable price. They're not cheap, but they have a lower, more affordable price point than higher end animal hair brushes such as Hakuhodo, Chikuhodo, and Sonia G. You also have different types of animal hair and that can range in price as well. Goat hair is the most prevalent type of hair that is used for eye brushes, but you also have squirrel hair brushes that are very expensive. And even in each category, like a blue squirrel will be more expensive than a gray gray squirrel and then for the goat hair we have different grades so you have the really fine soft goat hair that is from certain parts of the animal fur that are more expensive than the cheaper fur that's found in like the hind legs it's stuff like that that comes into play but you don't have to worry about that right that's not something that you have to consider it's just stuff I've learned just because I love brushes so much and I get invested in learning about the types of hair and all of that but that is neither here nor there. Just figure out if you're gonna do natural hair, synthetic hair, or a combination of both, all right? That's, that's your prerogative, but that choice needs to be made. All right, once you figure that out, now you are wondering what brands are there. Again, I mentioned a couple that I recommend with Refer being a go-to brand for more affordable, Fude natural hair bristle brushes. And I say Fude because Fude is a specific type of brush making that originated out of Japan. They're handmade brushes. They're artisans that are trained for years to create these brushes. So a lot of work go into them. They're Fude, they're specialized, all right? Hence the added expense as well. So Refer is a great brand to check out. Again, they have more affordable price points. My go-to natural hair brand would be Sonia G. I love Sonia G brushes so much because 
Sonia G has an eye for design. She creates brushes that are really functional because she's a user as well as a manif- well, she's not the direct manufacturer, but she's a brand owner. She creates and designs brushes for practical purposes, right? So she applies makeup, she knows what to look for, and I think she has a great eye for it. So Sonia G is another one of my highly recommended brush brands. However, Sonia G is very pricey. Her brushes are an investment and natural hair brushes tend to be an investment. They're pricey, okay? But I invest because I love her brushes so much. You can also get brushes from Hakuhodo and Chikuhodo. Again, they're a higher price point, but they have like cheaper alternatives to check out from the line. So they have different options, like different brush series that can be on the more affordable side as well. But those are the brands that I would recommend. So, Refer, Sonia G, Chikahoto, Hakuhoto. Those are my four natural hair brush brands. There are other brands on the market, obviously, and natural hair brushes are actually getting more expensive because of the limited materials that are available. The artisans are getting limited as well because not a lot of people are being trained. So keep that in mind, natural hair brushes are just getting more expensive in price. But when it comes to synthetic brushes, we have more options on the market. And there are quite a few great quality brushes from synthetic lines. So we have Sonia Kashuk from Target. I love these brushes so much. And again, they have a great selection of shapes and sizes to choose from. So I think Sonia Kashuk, you can't go wrong, okay? Sonia Kashuk, hands down, I love the brushes. They're synthetic. The bristles work really well. They're very comparable to natural hair brushes and they're very soft. So I love Sonia Kashuk. Another brand that I like is Real Techniques. Real Techniques has synthetic brushes, but it's kind of hit or miss with the shapes of the brushes. So they wouldn't be a go-to brand for me, but there are a few of their brushes that I really like. We also have Sydney Grace that just debuted their brush lines. So they have face brushes as well as eye brushes, and I really do like their eye brush shapes. Some of those brushes are really great, but I think my top synthetic brand would probably be BK Beauty. They have a great variety of face brushes, especially that I've fallen in love with, but they have some great eye brushes as well. I hope that they expand the range of eye brushes because I think they can do great things there with the shapes. They have to be a little bit more diverse. I think they need to just expand that range a bit. I would love to be able to help them with that because I feel like they can do great things. Another brand is the Sephora Collection. So the Sephora Collection has a lot of brushes again to choose from and they have different sizes different price ranges we have the sephora pro collection that has a different quality of bristle versus like the regular sephora collection they have a range of brushes as well so depending on again the style of brush that you're looking for you can go in store check them out see which one best suits you so those are the brush collections that i would recommend both synthetic and natural. All right, I've given you all that information, but let's actually talk about brush shapes and sizes and different options that are available. And I know I started out with one of my favorite blending brushes. This is from Sonia G, it is the Detail Pro. It is a beautiful, large blending brush. You'll see it's large all around, so the width of the bristles at the top, it's very wide, right? and it has a pinched ferrule. Most blended brushes will have a pinched ferrule. So this is the ferrule of the brush. This is the handle, okay? That comes into play as well, but I don't think I need to dive into that right now. I think that's for a different video, but your blended brushes will have a smaller pinched area at the base, and then they will flare out. You wanna pay attention to the shape of the top of the brush. For the Sonia G Detail Pro, it has a domed shape. So it has a semicircle domed top. And if you look closely, you'll see that there's a taper of bristles going towards the center. So the bristles start getting shorter and shorter and then they kind of peak in the middle, but it's not a 
pointed brush, it still comes to a smooth, rounded edge at the top. So this ends up being a great brush if you have a lot of real estate on your eyelids and you're trying to apply a quick wash of color in a large space in the least amount of time. So if you'll realize on my eyelids, this brush fits all the way into my crease and I can apply color quickly. Now, of course, there are smaller options available for this type of brush. So this is a refer number 15 blending brush. It's a natural hair brush made from goat hair. And you'll see it has a similar shape to the Sonia G Detail Pro, but it's just smaller. Again, it has the pinched base. It flares out and has a dome top. Easy peasy brush, great brush to have in your arsenal. We also have, like I mentioned, BK Beauty that makes similar brushes, but this is now a synthetic option. This is the BK Beauty 212 brush. Again, it tapers at the base, flares out, and has this dome top with shorter bristles kind of merging at the top. Beautiful blending brush again. My other synthetic option from Sonia Kashuk, a cheaper alternative, is their blending crease brush. This is a similar shape again. You'll see it has the dome shape, but this one is a little bit flatter on the top. And again, be mindful of the top of the brush. Pay attention to the top of the brush because that comes into play when it comes to blending. One of my other favorite blending brushes is from BH Cosmetics. I don't know if this is still available. I've seen it on sites like Poshmark and Mercari, but it's kind of sketchy when it comes to BH Cosmetics because they were purchased by Makeup Revolution. It's a whole situation, all right? But their brush, their V5 brush, is a beautiful brush. And you see that shape and size is exactly what I'm looking for for my larger eyelids. Now, we have an option from Sydney Grace. This is the SGE01. So this is their eyeshadow number one brush. It's also synthetic, so here are my three synthetic options and I love them. You'll see most of them have a very similar shape to each other. We also have this Sonia Kashuk blending brush. This is another line from Sonia Kashuk. It is a great alternative to the BH Cosmetics V5 brush. So you'll see they have a similar shape and size. So if you can't get the BH Cosmetics one, which I think you can't, then the Sony Kashuk option is a great alternative. Now I want to show you the range in sizes of blending brushes based on six of the brushes that I just showed you. Starting with the largest one, which is a Detail Pro from Sonia G. Love this brush. Down to the Sonia Kashuk blending crease brush. So you'll see they all have a similar shape, just a little bit of a different size. And you also want to look at the top. So you'll see again, the Sonia G1 has a larger surface area and then the Sonia Kashuk one, ooh, if I can get it out, <laughs> that one has a smaller surface area. But with the smaller brushes, let's take out the Detail Pro for a bit. You'll see that all five of these kind of have a similar size to the top of the brush, which comes into play when you start applying and blending your eyeshadow. Now there are also really small versions available for blending brushes. We have the BK Beauty 211 brush. So this is a smaller version of the 212. So you'll see the difference in size. If you're going for precision or if you have really small eyes, you can use this brush. We also have the Sydney Grace E03 brush. So this is their smaller eyeshadow brush. And here it is compared to the E01. It's a smaller blending brush, but it has a very similar shape. Another blending brush that I use a lot is the Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. This is a synthetic brush, but it has a slightly different shape than the others because it doesn't quite have a pinched ferrule, so it doesn't flare out as much at the sides. And the dome top is flattened, so it's not as domed. This is going to give you a little less diffusion of color. Let's talk about that. Let's actually use the BH Cosmetics V5 brush for this demonstration because 
it has a variation in color so it can really highlight what I'm trying to point out. Remember when I mentioned that the bristles kind of start getting shorter at the sides before they peak at the center of the brush? These bristles at the side that taper a bit will allow you to blend the eyeshadow a little bit more effortlessly because they're shorter bristles that lead into longer bristles. That way, depending on how you angle the brush, if you angle it on the side, you'll get more bristles touching the skin and you're able to blend and diffuse using more of the sides of the bristles. If you angle it straight on, then you're just going to get the top of the bristles, which is going to deposit color. And if you apply a little bit of more pressure and you start doing your blending motions, those side bristles come into play and help to diffuse color while maintaining color at the center point where the dome actually is the highest. For the Real Techniques brush, this brush has a flatter top. So it can deposit a lot of color because the color now at the top, when you grab your eyeshadow, all this color can be deposited on your skin right away. You can angle it to blend out the edges, but you're gonna get just more color payoff because the bristles are almost the same height at the top. So it almost acts as a lay down brush rather than a blend in brush, but this is great for depositing color on the outer lid or crease area. Speaking of depositing color, let's talk about these shader brushes. These are lay down eyeshadow brushes and I just have my collection here from Sonia G. These are a dime a dozen. You can find these from almost any brand and to me it doesn't really matter if they're synthetic or natural hair. A natural hair brush has a texture to the cuticle of the brush. So that's just inherent in a natural bristle. If you look at hair under a microscope, you'll see little spikes almost coming off the hair cuticle. That creates a texture to the brush hair and it actually helps to pick up eyeshadow, especially if you have hard pressed eyeshadow, it almost roughs up the eyeshadow so you get more pickup on your brush and you can deposit more color. A synthetic brush, that cuticle is smooth. It's almost completely flat, so there's no texture to it to pick up eyeshadow. As I said though, technology has improved, so they're improving the texture to allow for a synthetic bristle to pick up eyeshadow, but if you've ever created a hard pan or a film on the top of your eyeshadow, that's probably from using a synthetic bristle brush because again, it has a smooth cuticle, the bristles are smooth, so they can just coat your eyeshadows. Instead of picking it up, it's kind of just smoothing out the top of your eyeshadow. So just be mindful of that. But these are all natural hair brushes. I feel for pickup, you can kind of rough up the surface of an eyeshadow with a synthetic brush so it's not that difficult. But hair different sizes, but again, the same shape we're looking at. They tend to be pinched and flat. So they're pinched at the ferrule, again, they create this flat kind of spade shape. So they look like what you would consider a little shovel, right? They're flat at the sides and they have a pinched top. So these are not gonna be used for blending. They can be used if you lay them on the side, depending on how you angle your brush, they can be used for blending, but it's not gonna be as effective as a blending brush with the dome shape, right? But again, this is the shape you're looking for. Depending on your eye shape and size, then you'll go for larger or smaller. This is the smallest one I have in my collection. This is the Builder 3 brush from Sonia G. This one is the Worker brush. This is a little bit larger, but a similar size and shape. Then we have the Sky Set. This is the soft shader. It has a different bristle type, so it's ultra soft. It's really comfortable. I love that. And then we have larger shader brushes. So we have the Worker 2 and the Jumbo Blender. These are larger. These are gonna pick up more color, obviously. It's gonna cover a larger area. If you have larger eyes, these are ideal. And I love these brushes again. Now what I didn't mention yet is the length of your bristles and the density of the brush hairs. So let's jump into that. The longer your brush hairs, so the longer the bristles of your brush, the less control you're going to have 
over the application and blend. So if you want a really diffused look that is kind of just airy and just a wash of color, then you're going to go for longer bristles because the brush will be a little floppier, the bristles will move a lot easier because they're longer, right? So there's less stiffness to the bristles. This is gonna give you a really diffused look. The same thing can be said for this brush from Sonia Kashuk. Floppier bristles, right? Longer bristles. So you're gonna get more movement out of it and a more diffused blend. For the Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush, the bristles are shorter, but they're also denser. So they don't move as easily or as readily. This is what, again, I use as like my blend and lay down brush because it's stiff, it's dense, it's gonna lay down color and not move it a lot. If I want to blend, I'm gonna grab one of these brushes that have longer bristles and are a little bit more floppy. You're going for a beautiful blend, a diffused look, but you don't wanna get sloppy with it. So your bristles are never gonna be too long or too floppy. That's what you'll see in like a face brush, like a highlighter brush for the face, like this brush here. This is a Sigma FO3 brush. This is a high cheekbone highlighter brush. These bristles are gonna be longer and floppier, so they're looser. It will pick up less product overall, but it's also a floppier brush, so it will allow you to apply a really diffused look on the cheeks, not a lot of product, but for eyeshadows, you're looking for color payoff. You wanna blend, but you just still want color payoff. So most eyeshadow blending brushes will not be very floppy. They'll have like a medium density, and they'll be a similar length to these bristles that we're seeing here. As you can see from all the brushes that I showed you, they have longer bristles, so they give you the ability to diffuse your color, but you won't lose complete control. All right, let me show you a couple of more specialized brushes that I find very useful. We have these pencil type brushes, and these are the ones that I have in my collection that I find the most useful. There are other alternatives on the market, so I have more from Sonia G, and I have one from Sydney Grace. So a pencil type brush or a small domed brush is going to allow for precision. These are great on the inner tear duct. So remember when I said you'll apply a little bit of a highlight color on that inner tear duct? These are great. They fit right in that small area. You can pop color on and you see how short the bristles are. This is going to give you that impact, that color payoff. They're not gonna blend a ton. They do have that domed shape though, so if you lay them a certain way on your eyelid, it can still do some blending, but they're more for eyeshadow lay down. You can also use these on the lower lash line because that's a smaller area, it's more concentrated. You want a smaller brush for precision. These are great for that. Also, if you're doing like a cut crease look where you wanna get into a very tight spot, these are the brushes for you. If you wanna do a really defined outer V or outer crease, again, this is great for you because you can get that precision. And then you can always go in with a larger blending brush to then diffuse the edges. So you can use these to help apply color and then blend out the edges with another brush. So we have the Sydney Grace 04 eyeshadow brush a small blending brush, great for precision, great for cut creases. We have the Sonia G Detailed Brush. This has a pointed tip. Remember when we talked about the shape? So this has a more pointed tip. So you'll get a concentration of color from the tip, but if you angle it, you can get some blending and diffusion from the sides. We have the number 12 brush from Refer. This is one of my favorite inner tear duct brushes because it's soft. It's a little bit larger than like a pointed pencil brush and it diffuses color really well, it's excellent. And then we have the BK Beauty 207 brush. This is also a very great one. It's a synthetic alternative, it's small, it works perfectly. So these detailed brushes do come in handy. We also have other shader brushes, and you know what, let me put that brush to the side for a second. We have these two shader brushes from MAC. These are excellent. You can find these, again, from different brands, the same shape or similar, but these are just my go-to. These are synthetic bristles from MAC. So we have the small shader 242 and the large shader 252. I use these for precision application. 
the small shader works well on the lower lash line if you look at the tip of this so it's like a shader lay down eyeshadow brush but it is very thin very defined you can use it to lay down eyeshadow but it works really great if you want precision like creating a cut crease it can create a sharp line because of the top of the brush I love it and it also works on the lower lash line area because you can get right up against the lower lash line it's excellent for laying down color and buffing it out then we have the large shader this is a more like specialized brush I use this to apply color under my brow because of the shape it fits right under there it can help to blend out and diffuse color under the brow I love this one so much and that calls into play our specialized eraser brush this is a handy one to have in your collection and it doesn't have to be this exact one you can have one in a similar shape this brush comes in handy for cleanup so you're not necessarily using it for direct blending or eyeshadow application but it works so well for helping with mistakes if you have color that went too far up on your brow for instance or you need help with blending out the edge of a color on your brow bone this comes into play look at the angle on this so it's a shader brush with an angle and it tapers so it goes from short to taller bristles at the back side of the brush and it's a wider shape so here's what's gonna happen you place this brush on its edge just like this at an angle and you go back and forth and that helps to blend out the edge of color it helps to diffuse because again we have a taper of bristles and when you have a taper what happens you get a better blend so this brush comes in in the clutch this is the pro concealer 71 brush from Sephora I obviously don't use it for concealer but it comes in great for applying eyeshadow all right I've given you so much information so far so I hope you're still with me because we're diving into the actual blending and application techniques because obviously those are gonna be as critical as picking out a brush all right let's talk about it and I'm going to use my Sonia Kashuk handy dandy blending brush to demonstrate how we actually blend and apply eyeshadow but first let me powder my nose <laughs> okay we're a little shiny all right let's talk about the actual techniques now obviously there are going to be various application and blending techniques and you're going to use whatever feels most natural to you most comfortable but I'm going to show you the ones that I typically use so the first one is just a windshield wiper motion so if you've ever been in a car while it's raining or maybe you just spray your windshield with washer fluid then you'll see your windshield goes back and forth like this in a semicircle motion that is the windshield wiper technique so you'll grab your eyeshadow and typically with a blending brush here's what you will do you'll pick your eyeshadow up using the tip of the bristles at the top of the brush so that's where the dome shape comes in you'll pick up the eyeshadow like that directly from the pan or you can pick it up on the side like that where we have the tapered bristles which is typically what I do but if you want more precision pick the eyeshadow up using the tip of the bristles pretend we have the eyeshadow on my brush I'm not going to apply eyeshadow while I demonstrate the technique because I want you to see what I'm doing before we actually apply some eyeshadow so you're going to angle your brush directly where you want to place the color so if you picked it up on the tip of the bristles as I typically do I'm going to go directly at my eye at a 180 degree angle so straight on you can tap to lay the color down with the bristles so the color is going to get deposited then you can go back and forth windshield wiper motions using a 45 degree angle and that is going to help diffuse the color now depending on which way you hold the brush if you hold it at an angle down then the eyeshadow will be blended downwards so my color will then diffuse down on this side of my eyelid rather than in the crease if I angle my brush upwards obviously now the color will go upwards onto my brow bone so the angle that you place your brush is also going to affect where the eyeshadow blends so just be mindful of that also where you hold the brush when you're applying the color will affect how the eyeshadow applies so if you 
Hold the brush at the very end, you'll have less control of the brush and you'll have a lighter blend because you'll have a lighter touch. It's kind of like a less controlled action. So you're gonna get a more diffused look because now you don't have as much pressure on the brush because you're holding it at the very end. Think of it like a lever. If I go further up, if I hold the brush here, I'm gonna get more control, I can get more precision, I'm gonna get more pressure. So I can really blend and buff color out and get more color deposited rather than a more airy blend. Yes, that is key as well. So which angle do you apply your color? What angle do you blend the color? And where do you hold the brush? All right, that comes into play. So windshield wiper motions, that's one, right? You also have just the back and forth motion, which is really the windshield wiper motion at a shorter distance. So instead of going windshield wiper, you're instead gonna go back and forth, just back and forth. That's gonna blend the color again, depending on where you angle the brush. So if I do something like this, I'm gonna get color in this area only, while if I do more like this, I'm gonna get color deposited anywhere that brush touches. And the further down the bristles I go, the less color. So the tip is gonna have the most concentration of color and then the edge is gonna get less color. We also have the circular motion, one that you just saw me do. That's also called the buffing technique, the buffing motion. It's literally going in small circles this helps to deposit color as well as blend it out because what you're doing is you're applying color with the tip of the brush. So think about it like this, the tip of the brush and then you're going around and you'll see the edges of the brush come into play, right? And that will buff out the edge of the color. So I can concentrate color and use the edge of the bristles now to blend out the edge. So you'll almost get a bull's eye effect. This is great for definition and concentrating color on that outer V, outer C. Remember that part of the eye? So apply your color, buff and blend in a circular motion to get the color down. And then you can do your back and forth or your windshield wiper. So you're doing a combination of these techniques throughout your application. You're always doing a combination. And again, it's whatever feels most comfortable for you. These are the typical motions that you use. The windshield wiper motion will give you the most diffusion, especially if you hold the brush at the end. It's just gonna give you a nice wash of color. That's what I typically use when applying a crease color where I want just a wash of color. If I want a defined outer V, I go closer up, right? So remember, the further up you hold, you'll get more precision. So you'll see people hold the brush really close up and then do that buffing motion. So that will concentrate the color, deposit the color, and then give you a more controlled blend. And you can also use the back and forth. I'm holding the brush now in the middle. That's gonna still give me control, but I get more precision as well as that diffused look. We also have the zigzag motion, which is a variation of the back and forth motion. But instead of just going in the same space with the back and forth, you're now gonna go kind of in a zigzag motion this is typically used for blending between colors. So if you have two shades next to each other, say you have a tan and a dark brown, and you want to blend between the colors, you'll just go back and forth, but just go up and down as well. So it's the zigzag motion. So back and forth, up and down at the same time, and you'll diffuse those colors, you'll blend them together so they look seamless. So that's the zigzag motion. And those are the typical blending and buffing techniques that you'll find for blending eyeshadow. You can always do your variation of it, right? So you can do the back and forth motion, but instead of going back and forth, you may choose to go in one direction. So you want the color to go one direction, so you'll just go, okay, apply the color lift, apply the color lift. So you're lifting as you pull back instead of going back and forth. So you're lifting as you pull or you can blend and lift. That is another great one, but that's a little bit more advanced for when you're doing 
a precise color blend but that also works really well and as you go on you'll find yourself using a combination of these techniques without even realizing it it's whatever you need to do to get the job done the one thing i will say though is be very gentle with your eyes you don't need to be doing all of this this no 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 and i see people do it and they apply you'll see people doing this with the eye and i'm like I don't care how soft your brush is, like my softest brushes will still feel painful if I'm doing this. Like, why am I roughing up my eye like that? But you can blend like that, you know, you'll see people do that and it blends. But why not be a little bit more elegant with it and stop ruining your eye? Because that hurts, okay? And it's going to irritate your skin. We don't want that. So you can definitely do like the short tapping motions. That's another technique and it will work but it's not as comfortable. And I'm all about comfort in applying makeup. Like I am trying to have a great experience. I'm not trying to stab my eye, okay? So do your little short motions. Don't just go stabbing and poking at your eye. I'm not saying that it won't be effective, but it may not be comfortable. So not my suggestion at all. And for applying color with a shader brush, it's pretty straightforward. Pick up color. Again, let's grab our NARS. So you're picking up the eyeshadow on the tip of the brush, right? Or on the sides. You can use either or. If you want precision, apply your eyeshadow on the tip of the bristles and you can apply color on that lower lash line, for instance, or like on the inner tear duct because the color will now be on the tip of the brush. So you get that precision. But if you're just laying down shadow on your eyelids, pick the shadow up pack it on and don't pack it on both sides keep a side of your brush clean so you can lay down your color right I picked it up now I'm laying down and this is where I do the swipe in motion so I'll swipe I won't necessarily go back and forth I'm patting and swiping so you can pat just like that pat it nicely to really intensify the color or you can swipe swiping comes into play when you're using like shimmery eyeshadow so you're kind of swiping it across the eye patting is more helpful with matte eyeshadows to get the color payoff so you're patting it on to get the color and then even with a shader brush you can blend right so you can turn the brush on its side like this and go back and forth and you'll see these bristles are moving they'll help to blend so you can use your brush to blend in between colors. So remember that zigzag motion that we were doing? You can use your shader brush to do that, to blend between colors on the eyelids. Great little technique, but it's mainly pat, swipe, zigzag. Really easy. Again, be mindful of what side of the brush you're using. If you need a clean side, flip it over to the clean side. And that will help too with your blending because you can blend out the edges with the clean side of the brush. Now, when you come into more you know, advanced techniques, you're doing like a cut crease. And remember I said I use my shader brush, my 242 from MAC for precision and cut creases. So again, you pick up the color on the tip of this brush. It's a very thin tip. I can create a line with that brush now. So you see, I can create a line going straight in and then I can angle my brush and do the flicking technique or just pull in the eyeshadow out. So it's kind of like the tap and go technique. So it's pulling color out and that will fade color upwards away from that initial deposited color, right? really excellent way to do your cut creases but we're not getting too advanced you know that's for another time when you feel a little bit more adventurous you can dive into that now remember when i told you about the little eraser technique so if you get color way up and whatever and you're like oh my god i don't know what to do the colors on my brow bone it looks crazy get a clean eraser brush so remember that's my sephora collection angled brush really beautiful but I'm not applying color to it. It's clean. It's clean. There's nothing on it. So I'm not going to deposit any new color, any additional pigment. No, no, no. What I'm going to do with this clean brush is go against the color. So that angle fits right over the color. And I'm just going to go back and forth very lightly, right? So not pressing into the skin. Again, be gentle with your eyelids. Like, come on, right? Be gentle. So I'll just go back and forth 
that's gonna fade the color out erase it because it will pick up now on the bristle of my brush because I'm picking up some of that color really easy really simple it's a great kind of mistake correction technique go back and forth erase some of that color pick up some of that color blend it out a bit and another tip and trick that I tend to use a lot with my eyeshadows is to get a blending transition shade for me I've been using my melt blur eyeshadow this is almost my exact skin tone color but slightly lighter and it's like a thinner eyeshadow so it doesn't have a lot of pigment so I can use this as a wash of color so I'll pick the color up and I'll use it as a wash of color in my crease line this will help to blur eyeshadow again so if I have like really pigmented shadows this kind of gives it a buffer space so when I go in with my darker color I'll have a lighter color that will help to build the gradient right so I'm fading it against this lighter color that's already laid down that's a great way to help with your blend as well if you are newer get a skin tone shade of eyeshadow or an equivalent would be to use your face powder so not like a foundation powder but more like a setting powder that is lightly pigmented not a lot of color that matches your skin tone one that I like is the Kosas powder this is a great lightweight powder not a lot of pigment to it you pick some up buff it in your crease once you have your base and your primer down you can now buff it in your crease and this will help you with a blending barrier layer in the crease right it will help to fade out your colors if you're using bright colors you can go in with something a little bit lighter for me that would be heart shaped cookie from sugar pill I don't think they make this anymore but it's still a tan shade or a beige shade but it's lighter so it won't interfere or muddy colorful shades so if I'm using a blue for instance I don't want a brown with a blue it's gonna look muddy it's not gonna look seamless and beautiful so I'll go in with a lighter shade or I can go in with a lighter blue so I'll map out my colors decide what colors I'm going in with and go in with a lighter shade first and then go in with the darker shade so when you're blending keep that in mind always go from lighter to darker it's easier to build color than to take color away you don't want to go in straight on with the most pigmented darkest shade that you have build up your gradient so a gradient goes from dark to light so start the gradient with your lightest shade so you'll go light blue deep blue or if you have similar colors so you can use a light blue for instance to blend out a purple because they're similar shades likewise you can use a pink to blend a purple because it's a similar shade family you can use a yellow with a green and yellow with the orange that's basic primary school colors similar colors are gonna blend easier together not to say that you can't blend opposite colors it's just gonna be harder and it's a little bit more advanced so I don't think most of us are doing that like you're not going out here and blending a purple with an orange to save yourself some grief don't go in with opposite colors okay don't do the orange and the purple don't do the green and the red those can create a muddy muddy mess going with similar colors that blend together and merge beautifully that's gonna give you a better look anyway it's gonna give you a more seamless look to your eyes unless you're going in again with those more advanced techniques that you're doing a bold look that you're doing contrast and colors that's fine to eat their own whatever floats your boat but there you have it those are the blending techniques the last thing I will leave you with is to clean your brushes don't be a dirty girl clean your brushes okay don't be a dirty girl why are you such a dirty girl clean your brushes there's nothing worse than picking up a blending brush you're going in you're gonna get your blend on and it already has product on it you don't necessarily have to wash your brushes daily or each time you use them you can wipe them off on a washcloth which is what I do I have like a bunch of makeup washcloths that are available just for this very reason I have them on my desk and I will just go back and forth very gently to clean excess product off my brush and you can do that in between shades as well so while you're blending your eyeshadow clean the brush off clean it off they also have color switches now on the market which are just little mesh 
little doodads that you go back a washcloth will do you don't need all of that get a washcloth okay and just throw these in the wash and go and they have to be dedicated to eyeshadow because they're still gonna stain okay can't use them for anything else but have your dedicated washcloth clean your brushes off boom 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 also wash your brushes don't be dirty like I said wash your brushes after a few uses wash them that's the best way it's gonna help with the longevity of your brushes the lifespan of your brushes as well but also help with your makeup technique clean brushes are always gonna be the best to apply makeup it's just it just goes without saying clean brushes are gonna be your best bet they'll help with your blend I'm telling you this the less product that's on your brush the less gunk that's in your brush the better you maintain your tools the better they're gonna perform for you so keep them clean and they'll work to your benefit so that's it those are all the tips and techniques let's go ahead and wrap this video up all right so there you have it guys Hopefully this video was helpful. A lot of time and effort went into it and I'm hoping that it was useful for you guys and you can use this as a resource to really amp up your blending and eyeshadow application techniques. Maybe you found some new tools that you want to add to your arsenal. Whatever you were able to take away from this video, I just hope it helps you feel a little bit more comfortable now with eyeshadow application. If there are any other topics that you guys want me to cover that are more geared towards the basics, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I would be happy to do more of these videos because I love passing on things that I have learned throughout my years of wearing makeup. I'm not professionally trained. I didn't go to esthetician or cosmetology school. I just learned these things through trial and error and watching other people apply their makeup and seeing things that I wanted to incorporate in my own strategy or completely avoid altogether so hopefully again this video was helpful I will leave links to as many products as I used in this video down below in the description box along with links so you can pick them up if there's an asterisk next to any of those links that indicates that it is an affiliate link which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through any of those links I also have general affiliate links down below and affiliate codes if you use those links and codes I do get a kickback so I appreciate if you do support the channel by using my links I will also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you can follow me along I also have super thanks and channel memberships that work like a tip jar if you wanted to give back to the channel so I can put right back into the content. I truly appreciate your support and I thank you guys for watching this video all the way through because it is really, really long. But until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye guys.